don't know who they are, where they came from. They don't know their Latino background. They don't know their African American background. They don't know that. They don't know if they if they understood more about who they were and what people went through. I think they'd be better served to say, you know, let's see what I can do to make a little bit of difference. So we have to teach our children their culture, and we don't do that. We, well, we you know? didn't get ours. I mean, right. I didn't get that 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 culture stuff until I got to college. There was there was no black studies back then. We yeah, was no, you, there was you, no, there no was Latino studies either. Harriet Tubman and, and, and Frederick Douglass, and, and, but, and, and but, that but, was it. But that does not excuse us from teaching our children now about who they are and who we are as a people and give ourselves a sense of pride and connect and connectivity that we're all in this together. You know, and we all got to move this, we all got to turn this battleship together, you know, and move this thing together. You know, and we can't be, as some people say, we're fragmented out there. You know, um, uh, whether you be Haitian, Jamaican, African American from the South and the North, or you be Latino, Puerto Rican, Dominican, uh, uh, Cuban, we're all in this together. Right. We're all in this together. So we need you to know? take a different and, and, approach to service and, in the and, world. And, and, and for those and for those people who want to fragment us or divide and conquer us, if we play into that, shame on us. You know, because we're all in this together. You know. Everything came out of Africa. It depends on where your ship stopped at. <laughs> that's, 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 that's what it came down to. Okay. Okay. I, I, I don't disagree with mm -hmm. you. I don't disagree with you. And that's why I kept saying we're taking a different approach. We're doing things differently, mm -hmm. a different approach to service in the world. Because think of it, the young people could be our, our world leaders. Mm -hmm. You know, and then my whole other thing was I need them to be paying FICA and not bail <laughs> because Social Security is what's going to help us out here and if they're not paying if they're not working they're not paying FICA and 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 who's Social Security is dying because 88 percent of our people are are are, are incarcerated and they're, they're going up there and then what are they doing there but nothing and education is an ending opportunity it's, and it's, and there it's, are so many opportunities in education and and our kids don't well don't. actually actually for a while in the prison system uh, our people were actually contributing to the quality of life of those communities that those prisons mm -hmm. were in because they were using our people as censors mm -hmm. and everything, get more money and everything. They were counting us as people living up there. That's right. No, they still do. Still, <laughs> still do. do? Still do. Right. The census. I thought that they had changed. I thought they changed. Uh, they were working on it. I don't know if it's been changed. Yeah, I think it it's was, been changed. I, I, was, I, I remember the Bronx clergy round, legislative round table and mm -hmm. that was supposed to have been changed in 2012. Right. The federal government? It was changed. It was supposed okay. to have been changed in 2012. Yeah, they can't use they, our people anymore. They, they got to count us from the city they come from. We're counting our people that are up there here. Here, mm -hmm. right. That's yeah. where it should be. Because, well, yes, because that's they're coming here. Because that's right. where the fund, federal funds are being allocated based on population. Mm -hmm. You know, so that that's, it should be that way. No, we, so I that mean, pissed them off. And then there goes their jobs upstate. So mm -hmm. now they got to go into farming and other stuff or whatever they're going to do up there. They showed a video of, of a prison that didn't have any people in it that was... Uh, I hope it's closed by now, but it was, it was fully staffed, and and, and mm. there and there were no people to mm -hmm. be. To the to credit be. of this governor, again, he's closed a lot of our upstate prisons. So there are no bodies in there. There's no there's no people in it. I mean, it it has shrunk to some extent. The census has uh, decreased to somewhat. I don't know how many they have now, but well, I, mean, well, I guess my only concern about that question, yes, he has closed prisons, uh, and you, you save taxpayers' dollars, but how are you reallocating those dollars, and, yeah, where, right. and where are they going right. to? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, when you talk about the, the person who's coming out on parole supervision, uh, who doesn't have housing, uh, doesn't have a job, uh, 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 all, all these challenges they face, uh, where, how come that money isn't being redirected from the close of the prisons to make sure you get affordable housing for the individuals that have to go into shelter? Uh, why isn't it, it you, you can't find these, a, a place where you're asking the private employer to hire those who have a formerly incarcerated with, with, with criminal justice records. Uh, but where is the leadership coming from government to hire these individuals? Exactly. You know, uh, uh, if, if, you, if you want to have leadership, it should be coming from the government saying, look, uh, I'll hire Grant Valentine. I know he has a felony. We're going to hire him based on this to be a certain job. Now, the private sector said, well, if you're willing to do it, then I can do it. But if the, federal government, if the government's not willing to do it, then why are you asking or, bit, or twisting the arm of the private sector to do this? You know, so w where are those fundings being redirected to? You know, are, are they re being re redirected to uh, reducing uh, the mortgage payments? Are they re 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 redirected to reduce rent payments? Or are you close the prison to really work on a population that really needs this? 
And that would be my question. And I think, again, it goes back to the prison itself. They need to bring more education, more job readiness programs in there, add it to their one, two, three step uh, program that they already have, which. But the I women don't know what that up is, here, but. I, I met with some women up at Bedford Hills who have their degrees. who, Because oh, they were saying, I have, a, I have an associate degree in paralegal and I have a bachelor's degree in criminology, I have a bachelor's degree in psychology, I have a bachelor's degree in business. So I said, So what do you want to be when you grow up? <laughs> because when, when, I mean, cause when you get out of here, you, that, if you're speaking to me, I always felt that you're in the infancy of employment anyway, because that's what I do. I do employment. So what, what do you want to be? And, and they, they, they were not holding on to the fact that they had degrees. They, mm -hmm. uh, well, I, I'm going to do some uh, clerical stuff. And I'm looking at them like, huh? Stop. You're kidding me. Because I don't have any experience. And I'm saying, no, no, no. You have a degree. Did you start thinking about what it is that you want to use that degree toward? Well, eventually I want to go to law school, but I'm going to have to crawl before I walk. And I'm saying, you have a degree. Mm -hmm. You don't have to slither. Mm -hmm. Think about what it is that you really, nobody has aspirations to be anything. And these women had still had a lot of time left. Like, well, not a lot of time, though, because six years, it's a lot of time to the 27-year-old that I met because she had been in there for five years already, and that, mm -hmm. that, that broke my heart. But six years, she says, well, I don't know, what, I don't know what's going to happen in the next six years. They can't think past tomorrow. There's no, if you're there, if you're incarcerated, there, there should be discharge planning from the day they walk in the door, really in, in program in place so that they can see how 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 society societal changes are made and to aspire towards something because I had them talking about okay you need to go into business for yourself then well that's well, where the community supervision piece comes in well and this Danny I've talked about this you talk about people who care you have people in the facility who care about that then they would do that kind of thing and and hype, it, hype, it happens in isolated situations but not as, as a practice it no, doesn't not as a practice it, no. do, it doesn't and, and and certainly when you think of the individual the woman or male who's looking. They've grown up in a, in, in, a, in, a, in a mindset that I only live for today. I can't see past today because I don't, based on my history, what I've seen in my communities, whether it be East Harlem, bedford Stuy, Rochester, the, the, tomorrow's not promised to me. It's, it's what I do today. This is who I am today. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's, that's the mindset. And that's how they're they have. living. Only that's for how, today. There is living. no so tomorrow. How do we change that? Well, I, 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 think, I think we have to be able to first connect them with people who say, like you said, there's a future for you. This is what you have to strive for. You know, we have to be able to have a community supervision that actually prepares them while they're incarcerated for competing in the open market. You can't go to corrections and learn stuff like sewing, small arms repair, I mean, small uh, 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 appliance. Poor appliance repair, uh, tailoring. You know, they got to catch up with today's you know, technology. Uh, we're talking about trades in the 16th century. That corrections is still industrial age. Still having these folks do, and when you talk about refrigeration or computer, there's no certification that allows these folks to come out and compete in the open market for jobs. So what do you? So, so why would I take a training that's not going to prepare me for the real world once I get released? It's not preparing me for anything. It's this sort of window dressing to say I'm involved with something, but it doesn't help me. You know, why? Why can't? you have businesses come in to actually train and certify people while they're incarcerated and then come out and compete. Why can't you use technology? You don't have to have someone upstate do the training. You can use video conferencing <laughs> you've exactly. been a part of to train people in classrooms for all kinds of different trades, even education. Why are we still having our, criminal, our, our correction system in the 16th century? You know, at some point we gotta be, begin to, to, to move our system forward. If we really care, now, and, and that's the question that I asked Danny. Do we really care? Well, they we, just started. They just started to move the parole board. Uh, the parole commissioners are now doing conference uh, uh, boards. They don't go there. There may be one. But left but but board but, even, left. but even the parole board. But who, look, uh, my who's point on the is though. Board? But, but no. But my point is that look how slow they're going with technology here. Mm -hmm. They're still in the you know back in the century. That now you don't have to be at the, there anymore. But you who's know? on the parole board? What's the makeup, the profile of the parole board? Mostly, mostly um, cops and ex-district attorneys and, you know. 
So they're, they're yeah, you maybe got there? maybe two two social workers on the board, an ex nun is so, on the board. So, so where is the sensitivity to the community? And mostly that, Caucasian. What, now let's what, talk about diversity. Here. So so how do they get, get me started? To, how do you get appointed to the board? Well, I'll let Danny answer that question. <laughs> How do, how do you, how do you, what, what's so special about this, these people? Danny knows this very well. Uh, well, <laughs> the way they do it now, is, it's, it's all politics, unfortunately. I mean, it, it, it's, I don't know how the, the second floor picks them and, you know, who, how they, they, they go through their resumes, and, but it's mostly politics. Uh, the board is, you have maybe one or two or three, maybe they were looking for an Hispanic at the time on the Pataki, they were looking for an Hispanic, they grabbed Christine Hernandez. She was, a, you know, at the right place at the right time, but she's the only MSW on the board. I mean, social worker on the board, you know, and uh, you have, you ha and she's the only Latina on the board. You know, you, you have the, the, the the, the, the black gentleman who just retired. The chairwoman, is, she's black, she's definitely. And, and Tina, mm -hmm. who's, uh, who, by the way, I, I love Tina to death. She's a new chairwoman. She's a lot more progressive than most of them. And we'll see. She's just been there for a little while. But I think I, it sounds promising with Tina Stanford. So, so once you're on the board, you're, it's like the Supreme Court? You, you just, no, it's a six-year oh, term. Oh, okay. You okay. serve, <laughs> at, the, you serve the at the pleasure Court. of the governor. And the reason why they did it from... Uh, the way it is, so they give the next governor, if it, if it doesn't, a chance to whether he wants to keep him or not. Yeah, I, I think the question becomes on the parole board is how culturally competent, how culturally they are to the communities that are, are, are primarily Latino and African Americans who are coming to the parole board uh, to prosecutors and law enforcement people whose jobs usually is to incarcerate these individuals. Yeah, that, how, 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 how... It's not even one-sided. <laughs> how, 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 how... Uh, uh, congruent can that be? I mean, I, I, it, 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 it doesn't seem to make a lot of sense is, is, if, if, if you're looking at a group that's coming from Bedford-Stuyvesant or, 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 or South Bronx, those communities that have an uh, uh, environment that's, that's totally different, that's, that's really hostile in many cases, a school system that doesn't really service you as a child, uh, you've made a mistake. Yes, you've made a mistake. You've paid your mistake. Uh, you're coming to a, uh, to a parole board with prosecutors and sheriffs. What do you think your, 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 your response is going to be to those guys? They're going to look at you in a very negative way. Uh, you know, uh, and so I, I don't know uh, uh, how those decisions are made and, and why they make the decisions they do. Um, but I, I think there's a lot of room for improvement. I think they need to put an ex-offender on that board. That's what I think they need to do. They need to be a little more progressive. There are some states that do that. Mm -hmm. Really? Yeah. You, know, you, you look at the parole board in South Carolina, and I showed that, that, showed that to you. Mm -hmm. uh, these, are, these are folks who, 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 who worked at Walmart. Uh, these are folks who, ordinary people, you know, who've been from those communities. That's, who the, who's, that's, who the, that's who's on the parole board in South Carolina. Because they're coming back into their mm -hmm. communities. Exactly right. It, it makes a lot of sense. Okay. You yeah. know, and, and they understand what the dynamics are, the person who, who, who went into prison, what they did, and if they really didn't rehabilitate, should they get parole? It makes a lot of sense. Uh, New York State, I think as Danny says, it's more political. It, you know, it's about, you know, the, the district attorney who, 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 who didn't get reelected or the sheriff who didn't get reelected or how, well, how, Some commissioner from an agency or deputy commissioner needs three more or four more years, uh, you know. So they don't uh, apply, they're just appointed. Well, they, no, they all apply. They all want to be on the parole board because, you know, it's, it's, it's not a bad gig, you know. But at the end of the day, uh, um, I think they can go out and do a little more when it comes to diversity and uh, people with different backgrounds other than just law enforcement. You know, and then they don't do it. You know, not this well, not yet. We're hoping. <laughs> There's always hope up there in Well, it, Everything it, is an obstacle. Well, I, yeah. I, 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 Every think, time. I, I think, though... The only time there's room for a possible change is during an election year. Mm -hmm. Because these people want to be reelected and some want to do it with large numbers because they have other political aspirations. But at the end of the day, you know, business as usual when they're Well, I, I think the ultimate measure of who we are is where we stand in moments of controversy in moment of crisis, you know, and how we come together collectively to say, this is not right, it's time to do something different, you know, and I think your show, like other shows like this, educating the public about what's taking place, really educating the public, because unfortunately, and I've talked to Danny about this a number of times, uh, as long as you keep the public ignorant, 
As long as you keep the public Steps ill-informed, cool. yeah. as yeah. long as you keep them miseducated, it'll be business as usual. Yeah, usual. You know, and there used to be civics done in the schools to teach you how legislators work, how laws are passed. They don't do that anymore. They don't. So, so, so our, our young people... And, and, and what, it's, what it's turned out to be is our, our people that, that, that are the policy makers. You know, we elect these legislators to be legislators, not to our leaders. You know, legislators. But for some reason or another, they become the de facto leadership, leaders of our community or they've been, you know, the government in Albany or Washington. Yeah, let's uh, talk to this senator. He knows exactly what the problem is, in it, you know. That's now, that's not necessarily hell. true. You know, you need to talk to grassroots people that are out there every day living this. Because every politician has their own agenda. Every single one of them. And sometimes it's not the people they serve. There, 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 you know, there's always the question that's raised about why there's so much apathy in communities of color in terms of when it comes to voting. Uh, why don't we come out and vote? And it's because folks say, nothing's going to change. Same old stuff it's on gonna, a different it's, day. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's going to be the same thing happening again. Now, so, not, not to say, though, you've still got some, even though they're politicians, they're, they're your elected officials, but you've got to, like, right up here in, in the Fordham area, uh, in this area, Senator Gustavo Rivera. He's one of those firebrand senators that really get out there. I mean, you see him at different uh, situations. I mean, boots on the ground guy. But then you got others that are only show up every so oh, yeah. often. Four up. The, the, you got the, the, Robert the, Rodriguez in East Harlem, great guy. You know, he's in the middle of everything. He shows up to everything. And that's what you want to see in your political people that you send them. So they understand what your situation is because you're the people that are going through it every single day. What happened with those NYSHA people when they did this whole the, uh, mayoral thing and they all spent the night uh, and did nothing with it? Because they spent the night. I know. They should have oh. spent a week or two. <laughs> exactly. Lived there. Exactly. Lived there. I was like, there. I was like, that was a joke. That was yeah. a joke. It, was, it turned out to be nothing, because I talked to these CCOP people, and they're still going through it every day. As a matter of fact, in the de Blasio administration, what they didn't do is they... All this about NYSHA this and NYSHA that, the residents, the residents. When he put his transigency, there was not one ICOP person in there. Those are the Tennis Association people. Not one. Hmm. And they're still going through it. And then they're, gonna, they're always going to go through it. That's why I ran for mayor. Because I wanted to really make a change, make a difference. And, 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 and we are the grassroots people. Right. And, and, and Danny's right. There are some elected there are officials. Some. Who, who, who are, there are trying. Some are so trying. few. They're trying. So few. But, but for, for most of, for, for a lot of them, and I'm not saying no names, their only concern is uh, in two years re I, for re-election. Right. You know, and uh, you'll see me then, you know, uh, or I'm not going to do anything to upset the apple cart, you know, but in two years, I'll come to all your churches, you know, I'll come to all your, your, your barbecues, all your playground stuff, I'll be there. And okay? We, you we, know? We have to make that change yeah. mm -hmm. we that, that that's the solution is and 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 and, and letter writing no <laughs> um but but so like two things politicians and i call them politicians because it, 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 you have a derogatory you, you, title you, you, you have you have statesmen statesmen States, statesmen are the go. people who come out and really talk to what the people are saying there's very few statesmen around you have the politicians who want to know what's in it for me before i do anything for you right you know what what's in it for me you know, and what's the biggest bang I can get for my buck here?